Hi there, music lovers. This is John of Hornsmasher.com. And if you're new to trumpet playing, I'm here to help you get off to a great start with some basic information about how your trumpet works and showing you the proper care of your instrument. We're going to do this in three easy steps, showing the proper assembly, disassembly, and daily maintenance you should be doing to your trumpet. Along the way, I'll also give you some helpful tips and show you how to avoid some common mistakes. So are you ready? Let's get to it. Let's open the case and begin. When we open our case, this is not what we want to see. Items like music folios, books, or even our lunch have no place inside the case. The case is designed to hold the instrument and the accessories only. Additional items in the case can only cause damage to the instrument. This is what we should see when we open the case. We will begin with the names of the different parts and a little information about how your trumpet works. The trumpet has two primary sets of moving parts. The first are the three piston valves, which are used to route the airstream through different lengths of tubing while the instrument is being played. When a valve is depressed, it redirects the airstream to pass through an additional length of tubing, which changes the pitch of the note being played. The other major moving parts on a trumpet are called the tuning slides. There are three used to tune the individual notes played on each valve. These slides are moved only when tuning is needed for a specific note. There is also a main tuning slide, which is used to tune the entire trumpet relative to other instruments. Now that we know a little bit about how our trumpet works, let's move on to the assembly. The instrument should be assembled the same way every time. A set routine ensures a consistent result. The only assembly needed for your trumpet is the installation of the mouthpiece. However, there is a right and a wrong way to do this. The mouthpiece has a tapered shank, which fits into a tapered receiver on the trumpet. To begin, we line it up straight with the mouthpiece receiver, push it in gently till it stops, and then give it a quarter turn clockwise. This is all that is needed to secure the mouthpiece. Some students make the mistake of thinking the mouthpiece needs to be tapped in tighter, and they use the palm of their hand to strike it. This move can have serious consequences, causing the mouthpiece to get stuck. If your mouthpiece ever does get stuck, never try to remove it with force by using pliers or other tools. The bracing on your lead pipe is not very strong, and you can literally tear your horn to pieces by doing this. If your mouthpiece ever does get stuck, take it to your music teacher or to a repair shop where a special mouthpiece puller can be used without damaging your trumpet. Every time you play your trumpet, you should inspect the moving parts we talked about earlier. You should start by pushing your valves up and down to see if they move freely. If they're hard to push, or seem to have a scratchy sound, it's time to lubricate your valves. There are many valve lubrication products on the market. However, I highly recommend the Yamaha Synthetic Valve Oil, which is a part of my Hornsmasher.com care kit. If you are a beginning trumpet player, you should know that your valves are numbered, starting from the mouthpiece side of the horn and labeled valves number one, two, and three. The valves are not interchangeable meaning that you cannot put valve number one in the number three casing. If you ever try to blow the horn and cannot get any air through the horn or it plays with a lot of resistance, it's probably because you've mixed up the valves. Because the valves are not interchangeable, we should lubricate the valves one at a time and we should not remove all three valves at the same time. We start the process by being sure that the finger buttons are screwed down tight. We do this by turning the finger buttons clockwise until they stop turning. Next, we unscrew the top valve cap and pull the valve straight up, taking care not to rotate the valve. We want to have the valve about halfway out, exposing the top third of the piston and the valve guide. 
The valve guide is what keeps the piston from rotating when it is inside the horn. The valve guide fits into an index slot inside the valve casing. To oil the valve, we simply place a few drops on the side of the piston. To reassemble the valve, we rotate the piston about 10 degrees in a counterclockwise motion. We then push the piston about halfway down and slowly rotate the piston clockwise until we hear the valve click as the guide drops into the index slot. Slowly release the valve and finish by screwing the top valve cap back on. If the cap seems to jam as you try to tighten it, it means the threads are crossing and you could damage the cap if you keep forcing it. Unscrew the cap and start over, being sure that the cap is level with the top of the valve casing. To finish the process, we simply push the piston up and down a few times to distribute the oil. We should also check all four tuning slides to see if they are moving smoothly. If they seem rough or difficult to pull, it's time to lubricate our slides. In my care kit, I recommend and supply the Selmer slide grease as I feel it is the best quality product for the job. After removing the slide, we place a thin bead of the slide grease on each tube. We distribute it with our fingers. And this stuff will always be a bit messy, so you want to have a paper towel handy to wipe off your fingers. We then replace one tube at a time and work the slide back and forth. The same on the other slide. And we finish by putting both tubes in together. That should about do it. We remove the mouthpiece by holding the horn in our left hand and using our right hand to turn the mouthpiece counterclockwise as we pull it straight out of the horn. You will notice that there will still be moisture inside the mouthpiece and we need to dry this out using our pipe stem cleaner and we need to dry off the outside of the mouthpiece with our cleaning cloth and finish by returning the mouthpiece to the case. Our last step is to wipe our fingerprints off the horn before we put it away in the case. For this, we use our official Hornsmasher.com cleaning cloth and we simply wipe down the large areas of the horn. We replace the horn back into the case, put our cleaning cloth back into the case, and close her up. Well, music lovers, that about wraps it up. This is Horn Smasher John, reminding you that following this daily routine will help you have many years of problem-free service and keep your instrument sounding great. All of the materials used in this video are available in my official hornsmasher.com trumpet care kit, available for purchase on this website. See ya!